Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Coming up tonight, Fusion Superplex appealing for a chance to show movies after nearly a year closed. Meanwhile, the Christian Council president slams government over what he calls a lack of communication. And the married couple talk love and leadership on Valentine's Day. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Higgs. Topping news tonight, Fusion Superplex is making an appeal to the Prime Minister to allow the theater to open. Its CEO says the prolonged closure has crushed the young business and executives want to get staff back on the job. Claiming that no documented case of COVID-19 has been linked to a theater, the Chief Executive Officer of Fusion Superplex is petitioning the competent authority to allow the entertainment complex to reopen. Carlos Folk said while Fusion has weathered one crisis after another in the two short years it has been in operation, the forced closure resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic has been the worst by far. The CEO insisted on Friday that Fusion can reopen safely. There is more danger in sitting in an office setting and having a meeting where people are talking and having this interaction back and forth than it is sitting down watching a movie in a rested state with your mask on and significant separation. It's been nearly a year since Fusion was forced to shutter its business. The entertainment industry is one of few that remains closed despite the decrease in the number of daily infections on the island. Folks said Fusion has presented a plan to the Ministry of Health for reopening last year, but is still awaiting word from the competent authority. We put in a plan last year, um, September I think it was, they came in, did their inspections, we indicated to them that we would do reduced seating, we would seat every other row because we have pre-assigned seating, we sell everything online so we can tell you exactly where you're going to sit and we will be able to reduce occupancy levels to any number that government requires. The 100,000 square foot facility is only operating 10% of its business according to folks who says aside from the issue related to its closure, Fusion is also contending with the half million dollar BPL debt. We made a recent payment last week on the 3rd of, of November, sorry, of uh, February for an amount of $68,000 to cover the current bill. And we've been doing that quite well for the last five months. We have an indicated to BPL. We are currently uh, not capable of dealing with the arrears. We are under restricted operations. We have one outlet open. Only 10% of the business is allowed to operate. That's the outdoor restaurant. Folks said Fusion has a $498,000 claim against BPL for equipment that he claims was damaged during a voltage spike. Folks argued that the claim should offset Fusion's debt to the electricity company. However, he added that it is unreasonable for BPL to expect full payment. But if you're going to have us operating under restrictions, then you can't collect in a normal manner. You can't knock on the door for the bills in a normal manner because business is being allowed to be conducted normally. As Grand Bahama businesses welcome the announcement that curfew on that island may be extended from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m., restaurants on New Providence are hoping they'll be next for relaxed restrictions. Christina Dragovich reports. Weekends are busy for New Providence restaurants like Latitudes. On a Friday and a Saturday night, we have to do last call at 8.30 for the kitchen. Usually about 10 after 9, we have to slowly turn the lights up just to give guests a reminder. So you're already taking away from the ambiance of the experience of the restaurant. Uh, just to get them home on time. So. New Providence is still on a 10 p.m. curfew, forcing restaurants to set a last call that eats into prime business hours. Latitude's restaurant manager, Greg Glenn, says the restaurant operates on half capacity to follow COVID protocols. But the financial burden of that, plus providing testing free of charge for all patrons, is putting a strain on business. Not only do we have to rush guests out on a busy night, it is an extra seating that we're not receiving, so we're really operating at half capacity. Since December, Latitudes has tested more than 3,000 Bahamians, a requirement since the restaurant is part of a hotel. But Glenn says the process has been a simple and smooth one for patrons who are tested and receive their results in about 15 minutes. The majority of guests say it's a very convenient experience. It's a very simple test, takes around 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so it has been very convenient to allow us to still have guests in the restaurant. 
Last week, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis told reporters on Grand Bahama that curfew restrictions would be relaxed on that island, as he said Grand Bahama was doing extremely well with its COVID cases. That, the Prime Minister said, would be good for restaurants on that island. However, restaurants on New Providence are still working to keep their doors open. An extension to 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. would really make a big difference for guests having the intended latitudes experience and also allowing us to make that extra revenue to help cover not only the restaurant costs but the cost for the testing itself. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina Dragovich. Despite House Speaker Halson Moultrie's decision to quit the FNM, former Chief Parliamentary Clerk Maurice Tyne says the government's best bet is to leave him in the chair. It's, it's better for them just to leave him there. Um, I don't see what, uh, what greater damage could be done. Tynes, who served as parliamentary clerk for 24 years, reasons that government's hands are tied. He reiterated, though, that first-time MP should not be appointed House Speaker, naming Moultrie as a perfect example. That's a core principle of mine that first-time um, members of parliament ought not to be elected as Speaker. And I think, I, I see, I, you can see from, from the, what happened with this current speaker, with his, um, with his personality and inexperience in um, handling the nuances that come up in the parliament, and his, um, plus his interpretation of the rules have, have, uh, have caused uh, quite a bit of problems. Christian Council President Bishop Dalton Fernandez still pushing for a further easing of restrictions for funerals and church services. But he says there has been no communication with the Ethiopian Authority. Berthing McDermott reports. Despite calls by the Christian Council to further ease restrictions on funerals and weddings, President Dalton Fernandez said there has still been no communication from government on the issue. He called the situation sad. With the extension of the order, seemingly things remain status quo. Uh, until the competent authority comes back to us, which is very sad. Um, and this is why I've asked persons to stop writing me and to write all of the cabinet ministers, because we've been told by the competent authority, uh, all the cabinet of the Commonwealth of Bahamas. Last month, restrictions on funerals and wedding ceremonies were eased, allowing funerals on New Providence, Abaco, Mainland, Eleuthera, and Exuma to have a maximum of 20 people at the graveside only and 20 people at weddings instead of 10. Some people have argued that churches won't be able to properly manage crowds. I think it's unfair to say that because we've put forward a plausible solution that, that has worked, whether they've come to realize it or not. We've been holding memorials as we speak where there's no body and there's no, so, not so much. Most times people get emotional when they see the body and or when I'm committing the body and it's the final resting place. That's when you see the uncontrollable tears and what's not. It's not the same in a memorial, but it still brings the closure. And with reports that the fish fry at Awaki is packed with people on Sunday nights, Fernando said it seems true feelings about the church are surfacing. I think that's coming out in an inference and and if that is the case um, then it, it promotes this lawlessness that will go on just that people that will find creative ways to do things people will find creative ways to mourn in a society that is law and order we need to find ways to work together not to find ways to undermine the authorities that have been placed we must have an ability to hear each other's cry reporting for our news i'm Brothany mcdermott so to come on our news, the PLP hosting a voter registration drive in Grand Bahama, and we have an update on upgrades at the straw market, so stay with us. Imagine, that's where every advancement begins, with an idea that things can be different, better. Now, imagine a world where your entertainment experience was all about you, your style, your show, at your budget. At Rev, that's what we've imagined. To join the conversation and learn more about the future of Rev TV, visit us at rev.bs slash imagine. The men's branch of the PLP in Grand Bahama is encouraging young people to get registered to vote by offering a car giveaway to first-time voters. Navar Smith is a member of the PLP men's branch in Grand Bahama. He says he wants young Grand Bahamians to utilize their right to vote. 
Those who get registered for the first time will be eligible to receive a car by way of having their name placed into a group with other first time registrants. One lucky person will be chosen out of that group of names by the 5th of April 2001 and be given a car, a whole car, sponsored by the PLP GB Men's Branch. Smith stressed that first time voters who enter the giveaway will not be told how to vote. We're not telling people how to vote. This isn't that type of situation. But instead, our primary objective is to encourage people to register to vote and let their voice be heard on election day. That is the focus of this program. PLP supporter James Turner endorsed the initiative. He says it's more important that people vote than who they vote for. It doesn't matter who you vote for at this time. This is about having the right to vote. Do you know if you're not registered, you cannot vote? We want folks to know that you ought to register so that you're able to express and select your candidate of choice. It's a powerful thing. And look at it. If you're a first-time registrant, who are primarily young folks, we're saying to you, go and be registered. How much does it cost to be registered? Absolutely nothing. Once you would have registered, simply bring your registration card, proof that you're registered. We'll make a copy of it. You can make a copy of it. We'll simply drop it in a box. How much would it cost to win this car? Public Works Minister Desmond Banas providing an update on upgrades being carried out at the straw market. Banas told reporters this week that the straw market authority has been working towards an iconic design to depict what that facility should look like. And I think uh, when you see the colors, they really pop. Um, so we want the straw market to be a major attraction for tourism on Bay Street. As soon as we open up, we want the vendors to be able to have a, a, a wonderful place that people are attracted to. The other thing is that they're going to do some things inside also. So far, the straw market has gotten a new paint job. Bannister could not put a price tag on the price of the project or say when it could be completed. The straw market has been closed since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic back in March 2020. When asked when the facility could possibly reopen, the works minister said this. We are hoping, as the prime minister indicated, to be able to vaccinate this entire country in a very short period of time. And we believe that once that vaccination is in place, we're going to be able to fully open up this country. Uh, tourists will come back. They're going to want to go in the market. The market is going to have to be ready for them. But it's going to have to be a new focus in that market. A new focus on safety. When our news comes back from the break, a married couple talk love and leadership. Stay with us. Imagine that's where every advancement begins with an idea that things can be different, better. Now, imagine a world where your entertainment experience was all about you, your style, your show, at your budget. At Rev, that's what we've imagined. To join the conversation and learn more about the future of Rev TV, visit us at rev.bs slash imagine. It can be challenging running a mega ministry with your spouse, but the pastors of Bahamas Harvest Church seem to have found the right formula for love and leadership. Tonight, our Jillian Gray speaks with Pastor Mario and Erica Moxie on leading in love. Love and leadership, two things that when you put together sometimes can lead to a very bumpy road. But after 27 years of marriage and 25 years in ministry, Pastor Mario and Erica Moxie seem to have found a pretty good mix. They shared with us their top tips to building a love that endures. So there are certain things that you, you, I would suggest all couples, very practical things. What do you do on a weekly basis uh, just for you as a couple? very important to establish mm -hmm. a date night. What do you do on a monthly basis in terms of just simply being able to connect with one another, spend a day together, shop together, go out, do chores together. And then what do you do on a quarterly basis? Not every couple is able to do it, but uh, throughout the year, if you can do it once or twice a year, get away for a weekend and just 
reunite. Those tips came after many years of trial and error. The Moxies met at church long before Pastor Mario was an ordained minister. In fact, he was playing the piano when he spotted Erica for the first time. The first thing I noticed was her mini skirt. Yeah. <laughs> That's the absolute first thing I noticed. And, uh, and then the other thing started to come through after that. She was a young, professional, Bahamian woman. I tell people all the time, if you knew me back then, I probably would have turned you off because from an appearance perspective, my teeth were crooked. And so they were going, one was pointing in, in Inagua and the other one was pointing in, in uh, somewhere in Bimini, somewhere along that line. And, and so I wasn't necessarily a pleasant person to look at, but she saw beyond that. And I'm so grateful and thankful. She's still out of my league, by the way. Their love bloomed in small groups, and when Pastor Mario went off to seminary, his then-girlfriend would write letters to him and mail photos sprayed with perfume. Eventually, she joined him at Bible College. Despite building a strong friendship over the years, the couple say they're still learning more about each other every day. When they finally wed, they, in their words, were broke college students. Their marriage rings cost $89 in total, and they still wear them to this day. It's that humble beginning that they say helps to tame their lives and focus their priorities on more meaningful things like date night. Establishing a date night, we don't allow anything to interfere with that. To the extent that our, our daughter's birthday fell on one of our date night and she came to me in advance, she says, Daddy, I know uh, this particular night is your date night, but it's my birthday. Can we do something special for my birthday? And I thought, Oh dear Lord, what would even make her think that we would neglect her birthday? But the fact that she recognized that was such an important time for us. Even with their fail-safes, challenges do arise. Pastor Mario said leading ministry together does present challenges, but they've learned to work through the tension. And we don't always agree, so there's always this bucking of heads. And whereas, you know, I'm, I'm the lead pastor at our church, she is still my wife. And, and it's that tension that we're constantly having to, to resolve. It is not a walk in the park, you know, but there's also nothing more rewarding in the world than to be in ministry together. For them, divorce is not an option. Mrs. Moxie said her trust in her husband is based on his past record of seeking God and being dependable. Standing together and building their family is key, as they say they have to be as intentional with their kids as they are with each other. Sometimes the expectations from church and maybe the unspoken things that kids feel that yeah. um, you know, that their parents, are, or, or, or we're always out and we're at the bedside of persons and, and, and sometimes we miss maybe one of their, their, their school programs yeah. or something because of stuff and so even juggling those kind of things. And so we're very intentional that even for us, our kids in most cases have traveled more than the average child, but they've given up more than the average child too. And so we make it we're very deliberate as it goes for, for family also. Their final bit of advice was to surround yourself with like-minded couples who have the same goals as you do and give your all to each other, holding nothing back. Reporting for Our News Weekend, I'm Julian Gray. Rastafarians celebrate a special occasion. Stay with us. Imagine that's where every advancement begins with an idea that things can be different, better. Now, imagine a world where your entertainment experience was all about you, your style, your show, at your budget. At Rev, that's what we've imagined. To join the conversation and learn more about the future of Rev TV, visit us at rev.bs slash imagine. Rastafarians celebrated New Year's in February as part of the custom of their religion. Rastafarian priest Rithman McKinney, who was the royal ambassador of the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress, explained that different cultures celebrate different New Year's sometimes. February 7th, which is our Black Christmas um, um, celebration, um, the 13 months calendar. Um, even Ethiopia celebrate the New Year on the 11th. We have even um, um, same part of Europe, the same part of Russia, same part of China, and um, celebrate 
of different time of years, two years later. The event was held at the Rasta camp on Fire Trail Road last week. Children sang Rastafarian hymns and recited scripture. Here's an excerpt from their very energetic youth choir. McKinney explained the importance of the celebration to Rastafarians in the Bahamas. This was our father teacher, um, Prince Emmanuel, who set this foundation. And um, with us all welcome. This is the Ethiopia Africa Black International Congress. Through the Divine of Salvation, we will come to free and redeem the African descent, descent with um, being through atrocity of uh, 17th century, triangle slave trade. And they take everything from us our language, our name, our culture, our God. So, this is a platform for us to agitate and lobby and find back ourselves. Thank you for joining us for our news tonight. To catch our news on the go, download the Rev Go Play app. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm Jared Higgs. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.